Rice is one of the world's key staples, along with flour, soy, grain, and seeds. California's huge rice industry just north of Sacramento is so renowned, its rice is actually exported worldwide. But as KTVU's Tom Bakar reports, the drought is causing a lot of damage to this key ag industry that generates $5 billion in sales each year. Sean Doherty looks out on rice paddy land his family has been farming in Calusa County for five generations through Mother Nature made booms and busts. Farmers on the western side of Calusa County raise 65% of all the rice grown in California and in a normal year, Doherty raises as much as 10,000 acres of rice on his own and leased land. But in this, his third season of hard drought, he will plant nowhere near those 10,000 acres. And this year, I don't think we're 2,500 planted. The reason? Shasta Reservoir, the state's largest reservoir by far. It's so starved for water, as the drought has progressed, Doherty's water allotment has been cut from 100% to 75% to now 18%. I've never planted this, this few rice fields in, in my entire career, in my dad's entire career. In all, 300,000 of a half million plus prime acres of Calusa rice paddies lay fallow. They lie in various stages, from groomed soil for next year, but only if the rain comes. Most already lay untended, dormant paddies of weeds. For affected farmers, this represents a half billion dollars in lost revenues. My crop insurance is allowing me to keep my, my crew, my full-time employees employed this year. Now some critics say the problem here is that it's like trying to raise crops in the desert. Nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is this has always been an inland marsh and when it starts raining again it's going to be in. The West's historic and widespread drought is forecast to continue this winter. It's already shriveled California's Shasta Lake, a critical water supply, to just one third of its capacity. In tonight's Weekend Journal, Wilson Walker of CBS station KPIX reports on how the state is managing its precious reservoir. Gotcha. With a group photo for his parting right. guests, Harold Jones is winding down another up. weekend. Hope to see you guys again soon and his 29th year running the Sugarloaf Cottages on Shasta Lake. Sure. All right. We've seen a lot of changes. We've seen the lake go up and we've seen the lake go down and then we've seen it recover quickly. This time last year, we... The West's historic and widespread drought is forecast to continue this winter. It's already shriveled California's Shasta Lake, a critical water supply, to just one third of its capacity. In tonight's Weekend Journal, Wilson Walker of CBS station KPIX reports on how the state is managing its precious reservoir. Gotcha. With a group photo for his parting right. guests, Harold Jones is winding down another weekend. Hope to see you guys again soon and his 29th year running the Sugarloaf Cottages on Shasta Lake. Sure, all right. We've seen a lot of changes. We've seen the lake go up and we've seen the lake go down and then we've seen it recover quickly. This time last year, we could walk. But as California sinks deeper into worsening drought, there's an interesting and welcome phenomenon for those who depend on this lake for their livelihoods, Shasta. The decimation of what's left of the life support systems. The consequences of these evil actions places everyone on the planet in grave danger. Today, there is a confluence of events in the world which will culminate with the breakdown of the global economy and the social order. We are going to go through a very, very difficult time. There will be a massive upheaval, people angry in the streets by the millions, and the cities will burn. The purposeful collapse of our climate will bring about pestilence and famine. As that famine intensifies, people's desire for freedom and their desperate need for food and water will cause society to come apart at the seams. There has been chaos and violence in the streets. <laughs> is inevitable. With looming danger on every front, the world teeters on the edge, and society is at the breaking point. Climatologists, meteorologists, scientists, and other experts are stunned 
by the sudden advance of our collapsing climate. I said before the world that we needed a strong global agreement. The climate is being intentionally warmed through geoengineering. He who controls the weather will control the world. This is weather warfare brought to bear against all of mankind. Shalom. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahushai Ba'ashem, Rekakudash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, Wakasadim, Wabarakim. Peace, mercy, and blessings unto all the hopeful elect out there, to the elders, the brotherhood, to the Bayaf Shaddai, the house of David. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, which means He exists, that He is to be. The true name of the Son is Yahweh Shai which means is to deliver, right? We are the Hebrew Israelites. Today we're being called by borrowers such as Black, African American, Negro, Colored, Native American, Signal, Indian, Latin, Hispanic. But we actually make up the lost 12 tribes of Israel. The so-called white men are not white, they're red. They are the Idumeans according to the Holy Bible, right? And this is an article from uh, strangesounds.org. And as you can see in post-production, you know, Lord willing, I'm going to put some of these videos in pretty much dealing with the drought that's happening in california it's been going on for years now okay and it's going to lead to a uh a very um nasty famine okay it says california farmers lost last year lost an estimated 1.7 billion and followed thousands of acres of land as a result of the ongoing mega drought gripping the west collapse of the entire food system ahead so the, there's going to be a complete food system collapse man an economic collapse the dollar's going to collapse okay transportation the uh the uh the job industry all of that in general actually right now you have railroad workers going on strike right definition of follow it says left unplowed and unseeded during a growing season so there's land that's being left unplowed and unseeded and unseeded. There's also, you know, government, there, there's been uh, food plants that have been mysteriously burning down for the past year and now, going on two years, or I believe it's over a hundred and counting. Okay, they've been, uh, you know, your government has been paying different farmers to euthanize cattle, waste the milk, break the eggs, you know, this, so this, this, so this, the collapse of this food system is indeed ahead, okay? It says, in the fall, rice fields in Sacramento Valley usually shine golden brown as they await harvesting. This year, however, many fields were left uncovered with bare dirt. It's a disaster, said rice farmer Don Bransford. This has never happened. Never, and I've been farming since the 1980s. Everything you got, well, mostly everything, now they're making shit in labs there's 3d printed meat you know there's beyond meat right they they they, they want you to uh eat bugs now because they know that we're on the brink of a famine the scriptures talks about famines pestilence and rumors of wars everything that yahweh shai spoke about and and all of the prophets we're now seeing it planning out so that's how we know that we're at the end right Bransford typically farms about 1,800 acres of rice, but the drought was so severe this year that water deliveries to area farms were drastically cut. Bransford Board President of the Glen Calusa Irrigation District didn't plant a single acre. Many other farms went idle as well. Okay, California has gone through the state's driest three-year um, period on record. And this year, the drought has pushed the following of farmland to a new high. In a new report on the drought's economic effects, researchers estimated that California's irrigated farmland shrank by 752,000 acres, or nearly 10% in 2022, with 2019 the year prior to the drought. That was up from an estimated 563,000 acres of fallow farmland last year. Nearly all the farmland that was left unplanted and dry falls within the Central Valley. And the water crisis in the valley's northern half. The state's main rice growing regions in Sutter, Calusa, and Glen counties were hit particularly hard 
report said, with about 267,000 acres followed this year. The severity of the ongoing drought has been unprecedented for the Sacramento Valley, said Josue Medellin Azora, a water resources economist and associate professor of civil and environmental engineering at UC Merced. It's been more severe over the past year, and you have the cumulative effects of the previous dry years. All right, let's get some scriptures. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 107 and verse 33. He turned it rivers into a wilderness. This is the power of Yah by Shem Yamshah. This is the God that, you know, parted the Red Sea for the children of Israel. And they walked past on dry ground. And that, you know, that was a, had to be a pretty amazing sight. That's actually got to be one of the world wonders, if you will. It's probably where they get the idea of an aquarium from. You can imagine, you see, you know, you're seeing all the animals, all of the, the creatures of the sea, how massive they are, how many of them there is in the water as you are passing through. That's the great miracle of Yah by Shem El Shai. Most high can bring droughts, all right, which droughts lead to uh, dry climates. Dry climates lead to wildfires. Fires cause devastation, all right? And that leads to the destruction of ecosystems and the displacing of animals. All right, the scriptures also talks about wild beasts changing their places. So it's really just a downhill. Everything is going downhill, man. And the men of Yahweh by Shem El Shai, you know, the prophets, some of my apostles and elders and their elders, you know, we see it, man. This is Second Edges chapter five and verse eight. There shall be a confusion also in many places. There's 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 tons of confusion. There's gender confusion. There's health confusion with the nineteen with the jump shot. There's confusion on, you know, uh, so called religion on every level. There's confusion here. That proves this place is Babylon the Great. And the fire shall be all sent out again. All right, Yahweh Hashem El Shai is doing this. You know, forest fires, wildfires, because that's what droughts lead to. All right, the destruction of the death of cattle and uh, livestock, the destruction of farms, okay? And the wild beasts shall change their place, and this is going to cause animals to migrate. Uh, where are they going to go? Well, we've been seeing an increase in uh, animal attacks, you know, mainly on Esau. You know, I saw two videos on IG. A fox just, you know, just randomly attacked this Edomite woman. Another woman got gored by a deer <laughs> in front of her house. All right, so they've been, man, call Loyum La Yahweh by Shem El Shai. And mistress woman shall bring forth monster. And salt waters shall be found in the sweet. And friends shall destroy one another. Right, friends shall fight like enemies. It says in another passage. But here it says friends shall destroy one another. Why? Because a man ain't going to have no pity on this neighbor. Now, when you go into the... Uh, Sound of his Bible dictionary, look up neighbor, it's one of your um, tribe or, or nation. Okay, so these heathens, you might live next to a, a Edomite, guess what? That's not your neighbor. Your neighbor is a fellow Israelite. Okay, and all friends shall destroy one another, then shall wit hide himself, and that's, you know, that's, that's the famine of the word. And understanding would draw itself into a secret chamber and shall be sought of many and yet not found right because you have to seek the Shem Yahweh Shai while he may be found see when these things start happening and that's when people are going to get scared they're going to start trying to get more spiritual prey and they're going to want answers okay then shall unrighteous and incontinency be multiplied upon the earth right back in Psalms says he turned rivers into a wilderness and water springs into dry ground a fruitful land into barrenness. So this is the modern day Egypt, right? The ancient Egypt was a fruitful land, but the Lord rose up Joseph to uh to uh gave him the understanding of Pharaoh's dreams, and the understanding was this: they would have seven years of plentifulness, fruitfulness, in Egypt, and seven years of barrenness and uh misery in Egypt, man. Okay. But that's what's coming to America. Misery, uh, barrenness, famine, drought, uproars of the people, 
food rides, okay, for the wickedness of them that dwell therein, because this is a very evil, wicked, sinful kingdom. All right. Uh, this is a pretty lengthy article. You know, I'm not going to read all all of it. You know, I think, you know, you pretty much get the point. You know, Yahweh Hashem El Shai is, uh, is plaguing. You know, there's, there's, uh, this is also affecting the, uh, the cotton industry. America's cotton industry is struggling. Uh, it's causing, uh, tomato inflation. Okay. Most eyes are working, man. So let's get some, some precepts. This is, uh, book of Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 38 a drought is upon her waters and they shall be dried up right this place is drying up the Mississippi River is drying up right that's going to cause supply chain disruptions man okay not to mention the railroad strike and since the railroad people want to strike the workers okay guess who else wants to start a strike the truckers okay a drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, for the land is for it is the land of graven images, and they're mad upon their idols. And these people are they're mad on Caesar Borgir, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ. Uh, a lot of these people they just openly worship Satan or they worship themselves. You know? They worship the presidents, they have idols, American idol. Okay? It's a wicked, it's a wicked place. They, or the main God that they worship is the money. Okay? It says, Therefore the wild beasts of the desert and the wild beasts of the island shall dwell there. So it makes sense because the Lord is turning this whole place into a desert. Okay? But ultimately, it's going to get nuked. And then it's going to be pretty much a place where only desert beasts can dwell. And the owl shall dwell therein. And it shall no more be inhabited forever. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. This is the judgment on this place. As the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring city thereof, said the Lord, So shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Right? And we keep going. Behold, a people come from the north that's dealing with Gog and Magog, the bear, the Russians, man. And a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth, dealing with, you know, the Persians, all right? Moab, the wash pot, okay? They're forming an, an alliance, man. That's Ezekiel 38. Togomar, Turkey, okay? They shall hold the bow and the lance, nuclear capability. They are cruel, okay? They're not going to be pacified with money. And will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, Everyone put in array like a man to battle against the old daughter of Babylon. That's the judgment of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, man. Okay. Now, as for the, the elect, the elect are going to be protected. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 13, and verse 5. It says, I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of the great drought. Here, right here in America, we're pretty much in the wilderness, man. Okay, but Yahweh Hashem is still with us, making sure we get our daily bread, etc. According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled and their hearts was exalted. Therefore, they have forgotten me. Okay, but the point I wanted to make was that the Lord was with us in ancient Egypt in the wilderness. Okay, he fed us. He made water come out the rock. So Yahweh Hashem is going to perform miracles for his elect this time around in modern day. Um... Egypt. Okay. I believe it's in Isaiah. It's water, so I'm sure. Yep. It's Isaiah 33 and 16. He shall dwell. Go up. This is Isaiah 33 and 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid, and that's what the Lord is bringing. <laughs> what the Lord's about to bring. It tells you in Jeremiah, Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail? All faces shall be turned into pillars. That's a sign of great fear. Okay? Spirit of fear is about to work on these people. It says, Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting 
burnings that's going to come with a nuke said, man. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, that represents the elect. He that despises the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hand from holding bribes, that represents the elect. That stopped his ears from hearing of blood and shut his eyes from evil. That's the elect. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Right? So the elect of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai are going to eat. They're going to drink. This wicked people are going to howl. All right? So I'll get one more scripture. And I will end it there. Second Edges 15, verse 10. Behold, my people is a lad as a flock to the slaughter, and who, and who leads a flock of sheep to the slaughter? The Judas goat. Okay. it's all. It, there's a saying in the world, it be your own people. Well, there's false prophets and false leaders among our nation that are leaving the people astray concerning the uh, Karagam of F-13, the MOTB, uh, General Yohanna concerning the jump shot. You know, the uh, scandemic thing. Okay? I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, right? The Lord, you know, our punishment is up, pretty much. Okay? But I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretch their arm. That's the deliverance on the chariots, what the world will call UFOs. And smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land. So Yahweh Hashem is getting ready to... Well, he is. He's already smiting this place and destroying all of the land. Egypt shall mourn. The people are actually going to mourn. They're going to come to a point to where they're going to mourn because there's no food in the stores. Nothing is coming to the supermarkets. Trucks ain't run, going to stop running. Trains going to stop running. Uh, rivers are going to dry up. Streams, lakes, right? So they're going to be in a state of mourning. All right? You're going to have people out there protesting and fighting for food. And the foundations of it shall be some in the very foundation. Okay? With the plague and the punishment that Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai shall bring upon it. For the Lord to make this place uh, barren and bring droughts and famine, that's the punishment. They that till the ground shall mourn, for the seed shall fail through the blasting in hell and with fearful consolation of drought. Fearful consolation, wildfires, death of cattle. You know, weird weather patterns. Woe to the world and to them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw at nine. That's Jacob's trouble. That's martial law. World War Three, civil war, nuclear destruction. And one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands, because it's going to get bloody. Okay? For there shall be sedition among men. People are going to get fed up. They're going to go against the government officials they're not going to regard any commands from their government and invading one another they shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able and that's we can think about a lot of scenarios you know maybe the city's quarantined right maybe there's checkpoints there you can't get in without a certain pass or a certain rights device inside of you maybe the bridge is taken out you don't have a boat you know to go across the water to reach it there so there's tons of things man travel is not going to be easy you see for because of their pride the city shall be troubled the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. men gonna be afraid okay a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor right <laughs> they ain't go, then no pity. Don't care if you have a dog, a cat, you know, a family, right? But shall destroy the houses with the sword, meaning they're going to kick in their door and raid their homes and take everything and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and great tribulation. So, yeah, this is what's to come. You know, repent. The kingdom of heaven is uh, surely is nigh, right? I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of great millstone. Shalom to the elect.